TSM CEO Andy Reginald Din has publicly shared the results of an internal and independent investigation into accusations of him bullying and creating a culture of fear at TSM by both former and current employees. This investigation was publicly announced six months ago. It's been hugely anticipated ever since. But is it really the end of the story? Okay, so by now, I imagine a lot of you watching this will already know the story up to this point. In November 2021, retired league pro and former TSM player Doublelift accused his former boss Reginald of being a bully who made TSM players cry. He's like a bully who gets away with being a bad person because he's powerful, because people are afraid to stand up to him. And that's what I'm sick of. So I would just say that he made a lot of players cry. You would be very f surprised at how many of maybe your, your favorite familiar faces in LCS legit mental breakdown because of how badly they're been getting berated, how badly they were just getting verbally assaulted. At the time, old clips resurfaced online, which were used by people to back up Doublelift's claims. For no reason, you're arguing with me and arguing this is annoying. And you've always been doing this. It's really getting annoying. Okay. And lately you've been doing it, it's so annoying. Because you're only arguing with me to argue with me. In January this year, Wired shared their investigation into the claims, which included reports from former TSM staff that they had allegedly been subject to mental abuse by Reginald and that they'd been dominated by a culture of fear. Riot told Wired that they were aware of these allegations and had launched an investigation. TSM said they would also be conducting their own investigation. Reginald said he would recuse himself from the process and would follow any and all recommendations from the subcommittee conducting the investigation. Last weekend, over six months later, the results of TSM's investigation, conducted by the law firm Gutierrez Massa, were finally made public. In a twit longer announcement, he said the investigator spoke to over 30 current and past employees and contractors, including all TSM's current League of Legends players. He said they found no evidence of any unlawful behavior on the part of the company, its executives, or by Reginald himself. He added that no witnesses described any systemic and or isolated incidents of sexual harassment. From there, the rest of the announcement takes a more introspective turn. Reginald says he wants to improve the way he communicates with team members and that he wants to be the best CEO he can be. He also acknowledged that when he gave feedback on employees' work by saying that it creates no value, that it wasn't his intent to make them feel worthless. Reginald talked about how in the beginning of TSM, he would joke around with others by giving them nicknames such as calling each other Pokemon names or bots, but the other employees can now feel uncomfortable and excluded by this name calling, for which he'll be more mindful of going forward. As for practical steps, Reginald said he'll be working with an executive coach to improve his communication and that he'll be implementing a number of company-wide initiatives to hold all employees, including himself, accountable. These include a three-month evaluation of the company's culture, which will involve all employees at the company, the implementation of an anonymous reporting hotline in the workplace, and the facilitating of company workshops with outside experts to produce a positive working environment. Reginald finished the post by sharing the investigation summary as a means of transparency. The two-page long document from the Gutierrez Marker law firm starts with something we didn't actually know beforehand, that the investigation was launched after an employee of Swift, TSM's parent company, made several complaints about Reginald. It was broadly assumed last year that Doublelift's comments and the public outrage that followed were what prompted the investigation. However, TSM did say at the time that an investigation was already on the way, so it may have been this. The summary continues by outlining the investigation conducted by investigator and attorney Lynn David, who interviewed 31 current and past employees of TSM and the other Swift companies, Blitz and Icon, as well as all current members of TSM's League of Legends team. The investigation states it found no unlawful conduct from Reginald, no witnesses reported derogatory comments, that all female interviewees did not feel that they were marginalized, and that they found no cases of sexual harassment or gender discrimination. The summary then discusses Reginald's feedback to employees, which it characterized as having an aggressive and harsh tone. Notably, three witnesses, of which two are former employees, reported hearing Reginald call employees stupid, trash, or worthless. The other interviewees who were asked about this said that Reginald was referring to the work product in these cases and not the employees themselves. 
Six of the 31 employees spoken to, four past and two current, characterized Reginald's conduct as being a bully who created, quote, a culture of fear. Some people have pointed out that even one employee experiencing a culture of fear is noteworthy, let alone almost a fifth of the 31 people spoken to. And then of course, there's the question of the scope of an investigation that spoke to 31 current and former employees in a company of hundreds. So, there it is, TSM's internal investigation. Obviously, there's a lot to talk about here, and it didn't take too long for people's reactions to flood in. During a Q&A portion of the town hall, one long-tenured employee raised questions about the likelihood of TSM's workplace culture changing, given Din's description of the allegations raised against him as highly exaggerated. The employee also asked why TSM had alerted sponsors about the investigation results well in advance of Friday's town hall with employees. The Washington Post reported that the same employee accused Reginald of passing them over for a promotion, to which they were allegedly told by Reginald that they, quote, wouldn't be able to handle his bullying, a phrase which Reginald says he doesn't remember saying. One notable part of the investigation was its announcement that Reginald hadn't done anything illegal. A former employee who spoke to the Washington Post found this strange. They said, quote, in general, the investigation really seems to focus on the legal definition of harassment and protected classes. That isn't really what Doublelift or anyone was insinuating to begin with, so that's a little odd. This echoes similar sentiments from others that Reginald being cleared of harassing people based on their race, gender, or religion, or of sexually harassing employees has never been brought up in any of the public allegations we've seen so far. And speaking of Doublelift, he was quick to respond to Reginald on Twitter when he shared the investigation summary. He simply said, terrible person, and you investigated yourself, and no friends, and ratio. Sure, the investigation was conducted by an outside attorney and law firm, but it was one that was selected by TSM's investigation subcommittee, who were in turn selected by TSM's board of directors. And this has been memed on a lot within the Lee community so far, with the sentiment being that TSM's investigation simply can't be trusted as much as a truly externally initiated one. And of course for that, we may have to wait for the results of Riot's investigation. Riot told the Washington Post back in November that they had begun their investigation into the allegations of bullying and abuse, around the same time TSM started. The investigation is being conducted by the law firm O'Melveny & Myers LLP, and Riot have given no indication of when the findings will be released. Although the Washington Post did report the investigation was extended when the Players Association requested the law firm retained by Riot re-interview certain subjects or reach out to other subjects who had not yet been contacted. As I've said in previous videos about all of this before, Riot isn't beyond the scrutiny of true impartiality either. TSM is still one of their major LCS brands, and without sounding too cynical, people will likely see the results of their investigation through that lens. Of course, they may come to a similar conclusion to TSM's investigation, but their scope may not be limited to just whether or not Reginald crossed a legal line. Their criteria could be very different. And if they conclude that lines have been overstepped at TSM by Reginald, the question of course is, what will they do? This story has many beginnings, from the reports and clips from TSM's early days to the explosive comments made by Doublelift last year. But despite these recent TSM investigation findings, this story is not over yet, as much as Reginald may now want to put this whole thing behind him. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.